Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Touchdown with Doug Smith. As you can see, folks, I am not alone here today. Got a really awesome guy, has an awesome football story, awesome family, man. Um, he's going to share a story with us here today. Over here to the side of me, I take and I have Tony Wills. What's going on, my friend? Hey, how you doing, man? Thanks for having me, D. I appreciate it, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, folks, Tony Wills, he is a NFL veteran. Uh, not only has an awesome football story to share with you here today, um, but also well, this story of life. And, and, and man, I, I'm, I'm really happy to have you on the show. Now, folks, for those who don't know, uh, he was drafted by the Pittsburgh Steelers back in 2008. Uh, had, had a few stints with the Broncos, Colts, Bills, Raiders, my Miami Dolphins. Shout out, <laughs> shout, shout out to Miami. Uh, had to do that. Dallas Cowboys, Carolina Panthers, Baltimore Ravens, my wife's team, the Saints, and then also as well, Detroit Lions. Uh, had an awesome football journey, my friend. What has it been like for you? Oh, man. You know, I, I tell everybody my role in, in life is the same way my career was, man. Perseverance. You know what I mean? Um, having to try to find a way to make yourself valuable because at the end of the day in the league, you have two types of uh, positions, man. You, you, you're the guy, the multimillionaire. Yeah. You know, that sticks and has a 10-year career in one place. Uh-huh. Or you the guy that says, you know what, come hell or high water, I'm going to make a team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was me, man. But, you know, okay. fortunately, um, I, I picked up a lot of skill sets, uh, made a lot of uh, friendships, a, a lot of networking uh, yeah. uh, opportunities. And, I, you know, I had a long career. Uh, got a couple, got some hardware from that. You know what I mean? So What I'm, kind of I'm hardware are we talking about? You got to tell the people. Yeah, yeah. No, man, uh, shoot, definitely. Uh, rookie year, you know, stepped out of a, a national championship in a Rose Bowl championship of 04 uh, yeah. left the University of Texas uh, in 2008, and then, and, uh, and then the 2008-2009 season won the Super Bowl with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, you know, so it's, 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 it's that's just the journey, man. It's the journey. Um, I had a wonderful time in the league, uh, and, and a lot of that – just being in the NFL, I was able to utilize my upbringing, man. I grew up in a Texas, you know, shout out to the West. My boys out there in a Leaf. what's up? You know what yeah. I mean? Um, but I grew up in a Leaf, Texas, uh, and, and it was a different environment. It was an environment of it, that it taught you um, how to respect people because there was a certain consequence that, that came if you didn't. Oh, wow. uh, but it, it was – a it was one of those environments that I wouldn't change because of the mentality that you had to have to be, you know, raised in an environment like that. Yeah. And ironically, when you're in the NFL and you go down the path that I go down, you have to have mental toughness and mental fortitude to be able to sustain yourself as long as I was able to, you know, giving glory to God for that. Uh, but I think a lot of the things that I overcame in life, just being, you know, in growing up in that area, helped me as I, as I uh, went to college and then going into the NFL for sure. That's awesome. That is awesome, man. And, and obviously, you know, you have a lot of guys, I mean, you've been on a lot of different teams and usually after one or two failures, you know, it, they're done. That's it. No, no mas, no more. Um, but for you, it just so, so, it says so much about your story, about who you are as not only an individual, but as a man as well, too. So I think that's really awesome. Um, what was it like playing uh, for, for Mike Tomlin in the Steelers? I mean, winning a ring like that? I mean, what was that like? Man. That was one of the best experiences that I ever had because, to be honest, prior to uh, playing with Mike Tomlin, I had never played for a black coach. Wow. Um, and it's just a different dynamic. Um, the similarities of our backgrounds, uh, understanding each other from a mental standpoint, uh, it was just conversations were different, you know. And, and that's no slight to any other coaches that I've had. I've had some wonderful coaches. Yeah, um, but, you know, it's, it's, just a, it's just a different dynamic when the person that, you know, is, is the head man looks like you and, yeah. and, uh, you know, the things that he taught, you know, cause I was a, you know, I was a young man, you know, I came in the league 22 years old, you know, so being there, being able to talk to somebody that was established, you know, he was a pretty young coach himself, uh, especially being with a story program like the Pittsburgh still. Yes. So I definitely want to thank the Roonies for, you know, giving me an opportunity, a kid from Mayleaf to live his dream. And I, I definitely got to give uh, credit to where credit's due. Uh, and Kevin Colbert as well for drafting me and taking a chance on me. Um, but, man, his, his the way he led the team, I learned leadership from him, um, learned um, how to judge situations, 
uh, not emotionally, but logically. And I yeah. think a lot of times in our community and, and as men, period, sometimes we judge things through our emotions yeah. and, 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 and it can cause for uh, that judgment to be inaccurate. So I learned how he handled a lot of different things and how and just how to lead men. You know, I think yeah. that's the most important thing, how to be a leader of men. Uh, and so uh, I learned a lot from him in that time that I was there for sure. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that story with me. And yeah, hopefully things get better. You know, you take you see a predominantly black league and then it's predominantly white coaches. So hopefully these opportunities with some of the stuff going on right now in the world could really take and open up the floodgates, uh, you know, for, not for people for color, people of color, but also black men as well, too. So Absolutely. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful yeah. that I'm hopeful that some things will, will change. Uh, like you said, I definitely see in the climate that we're in that it's a lot of um, I, I would say. Uh, a lot of people of all different backgrounds that are just seeing what's going on and they've had enough, you know, and, and I think that, you know, that in itself is all that we were saying from the jump is like, Hey, <laughs> can yeah. you guys open your eyes and pay attention. And as, as you see yeah. uh, things happen, you're starting to see that that stuff start to take place. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm not sure if you got a chance to see it. Uh, Mike Tomlin actually did a, a speech yesterday, as a matter of fact, and uh, brought me to tears that, that was absolutely beautiful and this is the conversation I don't care how uncomfortable it makes someone feel that it needs to ha be had right now right now you know so um, to take and see that and, uh, and the stuff you were talking about Mike Tomlin and just seeing that speech and watching him throughout the years man is absolutely absolutely beautiful um, that being man, said that's, that, that, that's yeah, really I him say, yeah I was going to say that's him you saw this is the same guy uh, I forgot he flew out. I think I want to say it was to Africa or somewhere he flew out during the off season to help uh, yeah. a man who has an initiative to find lost children that have been abducted. That, wow. That's who he is. He's, he's somebody that wants to help. Uh, yeah. He's somebody that understands the climate for what it is, and he's going to always deliver his message. He's not going to hold his punches, but he's going to deliver his message elegantly mm -hmm. to where it can be understood and everybody can agree with it. Um, yeah. So that's that's who he is, man. And I'm, I'm proud to have said that at one point in time, you know, I, I was coached by that guy. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, the uh, 08 uh, Steelers, that must have been such a wake-up call for you, being around so many superstars, Troy Palomalu, <laughs> you got Mike Tomlin, we were just talking about, all, the, all these great guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, that being said, what was it like just walking on the field, sharing the same field, locker room, bumping into them, bumping helmets together? What, what was that like? Man, I can tell you probably about the first week, first week or two, I was in awe. And then after week three, I got tired of getting uh, – punished by James Harrison. So I decided I better start playing football. <laughs> right. So, so that, was my, that was my, but then I realized, you know, he punishes a lot of people. So I, I didn't uh -huh. feel as bad, but you know, I, um, you know, I, I loved playing there just because of the mentality of those guys, man. You know, it was an older team. You know, you had people, you had guys, I'm, I'm oh, not yeah. going to call anybody out, but you had oh. guys who had daughters who had sons, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> you were the grandfathers of the squad, man, you know what I mean? They saw, yeah. oh, but it's so much experience. I think just on the defense alone, man, mm -hmm. uh, not even counting uh, the wonderful coach Dick LeBeau, uh, shout out to him. Yeah, Man, we had over 100 years of experience just within the front seven yeah wow you know so when you're when you're playing with that that much experience in one field you know for uh -huh. a young guy coming in being mm -hmm. in that locker room yeah. man uh financial advice ryan clark yeah. wonderful wonderful guy wonderful mind uh uh -huh. troy palomalu as it pertains to uh the spiritual aspect of things right yes wonderful again, wonderful Christian. man of faith Man, it was it was so many different lessons that guys taught, man. Just having fun, you know, with my man yeah. Willie Gay and Ike Taylor and, uh, uh -huh. you know, uh, Tyrone Carter, uh, throwing Ooh. some names out. I know uh, the names. Man, work ethic with, uh, with um, you know, you had Casey Hampton there and uh -huh. big a, a Smith and Kiesel. And, man, I can't forget Heath Miller. Like, these are guys, the names go on and on and on. Fast Willie Parker, man, one of the most humble guys you'll ever meet. Man. But it's a workhorse when it comes to practice, you know? And, and yeah. so, you know, so many guys out there, man. I can't forget my squad, my old line. You had the Willie Colognes, the Darnell Stapletons, the Marvell Smiths. Yeah. Uh, Big Juicy, Chris Kimiatu, like, you yeah. know, Justin Hartwig, you know, Pouncy when he came in as a youngster. Hey. Like, it was, these are so many names, man. But the experience in that locker room, more than anything, is what I will cherish because – 
There was there was moments that took place. There was growth that happened. There was mm -hmm. conversations that were uncomfortable, but yet and still we yeah. found ways to make everything work. And the yeah. one thing that we'll always await, we'll always have is we'll always be champions, man. No matter yeah. where you were, no matter where you were in the, in the scale, yeah. your name was always associated with being a Super Bowl champion. And that's something that's special. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, um, I forgot, you and I had a conversation before this, but uh, when y'all won the championship, I was going to school in New Mexico Highlands and stuff. And uh, where's New Mexico next to? Arizona. So, <laughs> wow. yeah, yeah, man, y'all, yeah, man, y'all, hey, y'all went in, y'all went in. There's a lot of Cardinals fans in New Me Mexico. It's kind of mixed. It's like Broncos, Dallas Cowboys, Cardinals kind of thing. And man, y'all did that i was just like man locals are mad around here <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no that was awesome though man awesome so eventually you get to the broncos and stuff and, and whatnot and um man what, what was what was that uh position like taking and being over in denver and stuff man denver was cool you know it, it was a short stint uh, there were some things that, that just didn't work out for me there um yeah. there was a change uh in leadership when um we um had john elway come in uh, my year there, uh, Tim Tebow was actually the quarterback. So there was a lot of structural changes. Um, and, you know, change happens, you know, and, and, and change works for some people and it doesn't work for others. And for me, uh, the, the direction that they were wanting to go, that, that it wasn't going to work. And we mutually uh, understood that. So I, yeah. I, I was released from there. And uh, the cool part about that is that when I got released from Denver, Bruce Arians, who was the offensive coordinator uh, for Pittsburgh those, those years I was there, three, four years I was there, yeah. he actually ended up becoming the offensive coordinator for the Indianapolis Colts. So that was a no-brainer. I went and reunited with, with him, man, and we had a wonderful, a wonderful run uh, yeah. with Andrew Luck as a rookie. So Wow, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and the game could take a toll on you because you saw, you know, he just retired abruptly before the beginning of last season and stuff. So... Man, I, what, what was what was it like playing with him? Because he, he was a Stanford kid coming in. in uh. Man, man, this guy, you know. So, so kind of backtracking. I got to give a shout out to Denver and the fans in the city of Denver because that's where my oldest son Tristan was born. Uh, so nice. Denver is the city where I first became a father. So I got a special place in my heart for that place, man. And the fans. Uh, shout out to to, my, to Steel Country too. I can't I can't never not give credit to my people, man. Shout out to yeah. Steel Country and the terrible towel swingers, man. Um, the Yenzers. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, man, Drew, man, this dude, cerebral assassin, man. This, uh -huh. this guy is, you know, I, I'm not gonna obviously I won't say he's Peyton Manning. I will say that he's Peyton Manning esque. With yeah. way more athletic ability. Uh, he, he was a, yeah. I mean, it, it was unfortunate that they weren't able to get him the protection that they have now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Prior to him, because man, this guy, he's a winner. Uh, yeah. he's, a, he's a leader. He was a, you could see that as a rookie. I mean, he's a leader, didn't make excuses, held himself more accountable. He held himself accountable. So that made everybody else hold themselves accountable. Yeah. Uh, man, that, just the smarts. I mean, he's a freaking engineer, man. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you know, absolutely. Like, absolutely. Up, we're in a hot tub. I'll never forget this. We're in a hot tub and we're talking about stocks. And I'm like, yo, tell me what you majored in. He was telling me, you know, something, some fancy word that meant engineer because I'm like, I'm, I'm not even going to repeat all the, word, all the words that he used. Uh, yeah. So, so he's like, so you study architecture, like really build buildings. Yeah. That's the quarterback. That's my quarterback. Yeah, you know, what does your quarterback do? Oh, you know, he's in liberal arts. Oh, well, mine builds buildings. You know what I mean? <laughs> he so, paints pictures. Well, yeah, but yeah, Drew, man, uh, uh -huh. had a wonderful run. Uh, yeah. It's unfortunate that he had to retire, but I definitely uh -huh. understand. I get it, yeah. man. The game is, especially the way he played the game. Hard. Yeah. yeah. Hard. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely, man. He came out the gate and, uh, uh, man, he, he was just a, such a huge stable for the Colts and stuff like that. So, but part of me, uh, the, 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 the one part of me is, is kind of like, man, I hope he comes back, man. Just just give him one more shot, one more shot, you know, uh, kind of thing. So um, so eventually you go to Buffalo, Oakland, Miami, Dallas. Um, uh, now, now, now you, you're from Texas originally. What was that like playing for the Cowboys? Man, that was whew, that was that was heavy. That yeah. was heavy because I was I was actually born in Mesquite. Yeah. Wow. So a lot of my family was here in Dallas and, uh, you uh -huh. know, my brother, he got to see me play. Uh, yeah. which was great. Uh, he hadn't seen me play in a, in a while, in a long time. 
yeah. uh, and, and, uh, and other members of my family. Uh, they got to see me play as well. And just being home, being, being in a place uh, where you're familiar, uh, I was able to, you know, uh, at that particular time, go to a, a couple of, you know, college games because they were right down the street, you know, Austin, Texas, uh, go back to my old high school and in my old neighborhood and just reach out to family. So yeah, man, being in Texas and playing for them was great. And then, yeah, I mean, hell, we want to catch away from having an opportunity to be in the NFC championship, you know man. what I mean? So what, what were yeah, the, I got to ask you, what were the feelings like in that locker room? Cause I saw that I was um, like, that was a daggone catch. You know, man, you know, so you're talking about 14, so eight, 10, six, seven, it was year seven. By that time, I had seen, I had seen so much, you know, mm-hmm. for, for me, um, I, I just put it in the category was like, damn, that's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because at the end of the day, at the yeah. end of the day, man, it's like everybody saw it. Everybody knows what it is. And, and I know what happens. They go yeah. to the replay booth. They call us the next week or the next day and say, actually, it was a catch. But you're not going to overturn it. It's not going to win yeah. the game. It's not, you're not going to bring matter. everybody out of their house and back on the field to say, suit up. All right, let's do this, you know. Absolutely. And then the funny part is, ironically, Green Bay goes and has some freaky stuff happen to them to cause them to get knocked out of the championship. You know what I mean? So That was a weird it, year. It was de- – definitely, definitely. Man. <laughs> that was weird. Yeah, but it was cool, man. I just just being in front of the family, putting on the uniform, being mm-hmm. out there, you know, and, and just just to say that at one point I was a Dallas Cowboy. That's pretty cool, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now uh, you've been in the NFL uh, many many years and stuff. Um, now you you hear about these guys, you know, getting these big contracts or low contracts, whatever it is, and then going broke after a few years. Now uh, you, you work in the financial services district at the moment. Um, and what what is what advice would you give to any not only young young person watching this, but also as well any NFL players who may be watching this as well too, as far as the importance of saving your money? Oh man, man. before we even talk about saving the money, I would tell them to understand what their credit is doing. Okay. Uh, there's an acronym that I love. It's called OPM, Other People's Money, right? Yeah. So whenever we're wanting to do anything, whether it's build a business, whether it's finance a home, anything of that nature, we're going to be using other people's money. In this particular moment, that the other people is going to be the bank. Uh, so you want to make sure that your credit score is right, understanding how credit works, how to utilize credit, what credit is used for. That's important. Secondly, when we now when we talk, talk about the finance part of that, I would say uh, understanding your debt and understanding how to budget, right? If you understand your debt, the money that's coming, the money that is, you know, that you've accumulated and that you have to pay back, now you know how to utilize your money. Because a lot of times what happens is you get all this money in influx, especially when you come out of college. You're 22 years old and you're seeing $100,000 every two weeks or, you know, yeah. $200,000. You're not thinking to yourself, oh, man, you know, let me separate this in, in different sections. No, yeah. you're like, man, I got six figures. I'm about to go buy everything that I never had, right? Yeah. And the thing is, I don't tell the young athletes not to do that. What I tell them is, let's do it a smarter way, right? Yeah. Let's, you, let's, let's take the money that we have and let's put it in certain investment vehicles, allow those investment vehicles to pay us dividends, take the dividends, and then go buy what we want. But yeah. when we take the dividends, let's not just go buy what we want with those dividends. Let's leverage our credit, right? Yeah. So yeah. we have more buying power, and now yeah. you can have everything you want and just paying it off monthly, which you can afford because you have these different things until those investments hit big and then you pay everything off. But you keep your, uh, um, your principal protected. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's what it's about. And so when, when, I, when we're talking about that and our program offers that, uh, it's more important to educate yeah. uh, than, than anything, to, to, to allow them to know why we have to move this way. Uh, and for those that get it, man, they, they go on to do great things. And for those that don't, it's not too late. You just have to find a way to, to be able to bounce back. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, this was, have, I, and you made some good points about having all that money. I remember getting my first job, I think it was like 15 at Burger King. And I'm like, Oh, $150. Whoa. <laughs> you know, it's just like, and you can only imagine, you know, five years later, you have some NFL rookie, like they're not saying $150. They're saying, Hundred and fifty thousand dollars, you know, and then go yeah. go from there, kind of thing. So, man, thank you so much for sharing that with me. Now, um, as I've seen, uh, and you and I talked a little bit before this call, um, you know, uh, you're, you're a man of faith, born again Christian. Now, uh, through through your upbringing, 
you know, uh, childhood through playing in the NFL, all the things that you've experienced in life. Uh, how, how has uh, faith played an important part in your life? It's everything. It's everything. Um, you know, uh, I think the biggest thing for me was being able to, uh, my prayer life. Yeah. There were certain things that I wanted in my life and certain ways that I wanted to be. And I, I knew the only way that I was going to get there is by making sure that I started seeking out what God's will was for my life. What, what is my purpose? Yeah. Right. And as I continue to, to read scriptures and study scriptures for, for myself, uh, I'm a big proponent of, you know, it, it's cool for people to tell you things but it's also better for you to, to, to go and seek that knowledge and wisdom for yourself. Right. Um, um, I think there's an old proverb that says that uh, it, it's hard to, it's hard to fool a man of much wisdom. And the reason why is because obviously it, it's very simple. Um, if I have understanding and knowledge of particular things, then you're not going to just be able to tell me everything. Right. Yeah. How does a con artist con somebody because they're not knowledgeable in a specific realm of the thing that he's speaking of yeah. so anything can sound believable uh for me i didn't want to be conned <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah i i just started reading for myself man and the things that i found in in, in the bible uh as it pertains to faith as it pertains to certain basic instructions that the lord has for 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 people yeah. um i just wanted to follow that so yeah. for me my life is simple i live my life off the principles of what scriptures say yeah absolutely that's awesome, man. That's awesome, man. And having, uh, I know firsthand, uh, that's something you and I also have in common is having a relationship with Christ. And, you know, and it, it's through Christ where right? we're not only healed, but we're protected that we have him with us. We're never alone. You know what I mean? So that's, that's absolutely awesome. Thank you for sharing that with us. Well, hey, um, and, and outside of that, you know, um, you, know you had this amazing career, uh, everything from having a, a walk with Christ, beautiful family. Um, let, let the people know as well, too, you know, where they can take and find you. And, and, now, and, and also, if you wanted to shout your company out as well, too. Oh, yeah, man, I appreciate that. Yeah. So uh, Stat Financial Services is the name of the company. Um, yeah. And we're basically on a roll to one million. And I always laugh when people say, are you trying to make a million dollars? No, we're trying to change a million families, financial trajectories and futures of their lives. So that's what we're doing. Uh, what we do is we're a financial education and credit elevation service. Uh, as well as I, I am also a life, a licensed life and health insurer. So I can help you on that end. So uh, we also have um, um, QuickBooks uh, yeah. managers uh, on our staff as well. And so we're just a multiple finance platform. We're trying to uh, formulate a one-stop shop uh, to be able to help you with anything that you need in that realm. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Tony yes. the Tycoon, right? At Tony the Tycoon. Uh, on Twitter, it's uh, ahills 84 uh, and on Facebook, the same thing at Tony the Tycoon or just Tony Hills. You can type me in and you'll find me there as well. Uh, website is coming soon. Uh, <laughs> looking forward to that. And uh, I'll be uh, uploading a YouTube channel here uh, pretty, pretty soon as well. Awesome. Awesome. And folks, for those who are watching, make sure you do take and follow and support this man. Not only his vision, uh, you see this is a man of integrity, uh, high, high intellect. And this is definitely a person. If you're looking on getting in that space that he's talking about, definitely, definitely worth it. Definitely worth reaching out. Uh, also, as well, I'm going to have his links below in the description. So you, you guys make sure you go ahead and follow him. Uh, outside of that, man, Tony, thank you so much. Man, it's been real. Thank you so much for coming on the Touchdown. All right, man. I appreciate you for having me, D, man. Anytime, brother. I love, I love these conversations. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. Ho hopefully this will be the first of many more. And for those who are watching, thank you so much for tuning in. Have a blessed day. Thanks for watching the Touchdown. touchdown.